This is a big deal though, guys. As you guys know, I have been all in the last month on various humanoid projects as it relates to investing, assisting with funding. There are so many exciting things happening in the sector. I don't think this is like a big, you know, surprise necessarily. Your big three companies. I'm going to include a fourth now that I wasn't including all year, but I think I have to. We've talked a lot about Tesla Optimus, Figure, AI, and Aptronic as kind of the big three in the space that are actually building out supply chain ready, scalable robotic platforms that have enough capital to actually also build all the things needed behind the scenes, the operating system, the logistics, the deployment of these bots into commercial and industrial industry sectors. All three of these companies, I think over the course of the next few months to next year, will be kind of releasing their future generation scalable platforms. So we haven't really seen, I think we'll hopefully get to see on November 6, what the Tesla Optimus 3 looks like. I'm looking forward to seeing the figure three bot. I know a handful of people who have seen it. I have not. They closed their last round, didn't they? They closed their last round, I guess, over a billion dollars at the 38 and a half billion pre-money valuation. They had some issues a few months ago when Fortune magazine came out with a hit piece uh, related to their BMW relationship. But, you know, they were able to pull it together. And the bottom line is they have money and engineers. So like you need money, you need a lot of money and you need good engineers. So they seem to have both. So it's a company, whether you love or hate Brett Adcock, because he's a controversial CEO and figure, you have to pay attention to them. And at least as of right now, you need to recognize them as one of the big three. I'm going to add a fourth because it started to become, you know, semi-public knowledge over the course of the past few weeks that 1X out of Norway, which is relocating the company to San Francisco, this is the really funky you can call it like a soft robot. It's a robot that works off of tendon drives. So instead of having like traditional endo or exoskeleton that's made out of like metal and has regular actuators, they have more of a soft skin and they have actual tendons going throughout the robot. It's a highly controversial architecture for a generalized robot. Quite honestly, it's the one that looks like a, a person wearing a suit. Yes. But information is breaking that they are raising this round. It was in the press. So I'm not like, you know, sharing anything I shouldn't, but that they're raising like a billion dollars at a $10 billion post money valuation. So, you know, my sources tell me that they actually really do have leads for that round. So at least the lead investors are real. I want to kind of disclose what I know about that, but they actually have real lead investors. So listen, I have no clue. I debate their architecture all the time in terms of their tendon drives. You know, I, I do this, you know, with guys like Scott Walter, my roboticist friend, and maybe he's watching today, but I don't know if it's a viable platform, but what I do know, I have a lot of opinions on it, but what I do know is now that it looks like they're getting some real money. I kind of think you have to maybe include them now in that tier one, even though it's a highly speculative controversial tier one generalized robotics company. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's exciting. I want one of every robot I've ever seen. That How cool is there? Do you know the weird thing about Neo, about the One X Neo, is that I believe their game plan, which I've also, I think, publicly stated, is to have like thousands of these in homes getting trained. But do you know the way I think they're going to train them? is what teleoperated humans, it's like having an, a stranger in your home because they can hear and see everything. And so like- There is a 0% chance that that thing's gonna live in my home with me. 0% chance. No, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Could you imagine, dude? That'd be crazy. But you know what, Jordan? There are plenty of crazy people that would absolutely be willing to have in their own care. I would like, say this one. What do I have to hide? A dame doesn't care. We'll do it. We'll let a random stranger teleoperator into my home. Zero chance in my home. But okay, so Tim Doman's made a couple of funny There are millions. I just want to... <laughs> The one is that he said that he wants them to stop making them look like Jason, which I agree with. He wants he wants the one from uh, the Jetsons. I want Vicky, the small wonder. That's a robot that I want. Yes, Dave. Dave knows what I'm talking about. I just froze time. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Oh my goodness. You know, okay, so anyway, so this is it. I like the risk reward going into this event. I just don't know what the best entry point is. Does Tesla fall 50 or $60 more between now and then? I don't know, but I do like the risk reward of going into that event. What's that date, Chris, early November? Is it? Uh... November 6th. And then the big question after the event, we need to do a show right after the event because based on how, you know, me and, and other people that have studied study this market every day, we're going to break down the robot, right? Like we're, we're going to assess how impressed we are, not just based on your gut reaction of what you're seeing, but based on kind of our extraction of how we believe. The changes they made in the bot, the, any kind of indication we have on an actual rollout strategy that, you know, how are they going to actually sell this? Is it is it to homes? Is it to business? Is it even going to happen next year? Or is this a 2029 type product? You know what's interesting, Dave? I think like some of these companies have been pivoting to like home because it's harder to, to disprove home because you have a much longer runway, right? And and so you don't have to show contracts for the home. And to some extent, you could even pre-sell home orders and Elon might try to do that and say like, look, we just sold $5 billion of robots in orders that they could take seven years to deliver. That's kind of like the Tesla game plan is pre-selling, pre, you know, put your hundred dollar deposit, $500 deposit. It could be years before a product ever happens. Or did that roadster? Should we make that prediction first? No, I predict that they will, they will take orders. It's probably not during the shareholder event, but they will take orders the day that they do a product reveal. They'll take orders. And I think there's a great betting market play on over and under two years from the date that they put that pre-sale order form on the website. Haven't some people been waiting, put money down on the Roadster like seven years ago and are still waiting for it right now? I agree with Jordan here. The RAS rate, robot as a service rate to deploy these to for commercial and industrial use is so high. It's kind of in the range of $100,000 per year per bot, believe it or not, are being priced based on their human equivalent output value. You can compare it relatively to human labor, right? Um, and so if you come in under human labor, all in costs, healthcare, you know, all these, all the factors, um, then it's, it's an easy mathematic decision to make. Yes. For people that are listening to us for the first time, talk about robots, a, a very brief robot investor 101 kpis to be aware of hours between faults is probably one of the biggest kpis so what we want to know is how many hundreds or how many thousands of hours can the robot perform a commercial job without having a fault the other kpi is the task completion rate is it 99.5 percent 99.8 percent which is kind of where we want to see it for a human equivalent what is the human equivalent task output speed right is it performing it at 80 percent of human speed which is essentially the benchmark that a lot of these robot companies are trying to meet also what is the human to bot ratio meaning if you have 100 bots working on a manufacturing line, how many humans need to be there to assist them or to manage them? If it's a hundred humans, one-to-one, -one, that's not good economics, obviously. So that's a question that if you were an investor and you're like looking to invest in a robot company, right? Or you want to know the answers to these questions because these are the KPI thresholds that need to be achieved before these bots can actually start scaling. So if you have a robot company telling you, hey, we're scaling robots. Okay, can you answer these questions for us? Because if you can't answer these questions for us, then you're just hyping. You're just hyping, okay? So until a company can answer those questions for me, I do not believe that they have a scalable robot platform. OK, and I don't think Elon's going to answer any of those questions because, quite honestly, most Tesla investors don't even know to ask them and most analysts don't even know to ask them. But those are the questions that we eventually are going to want to ask. So if you're a Wall Street analyst today watching this, 
take notes. These are the questions you're eventually going to want to ask to assess the viability of the scaling of that robot platform. And so I don't think it matters on November 6th. I think November 6th is, can he impress us? Uh, can he show us the future in a way that just didn't really work with Optimus 2? So I, I don't think that, I don't think the, the bar is set quite that high for the November 6th shareholder meeting, which as an investor, I kind of like that because it means that there's a trade there. It's relatively easy, I think, for Elon to walk away from that event positively as it relates to, hey, this is a multi-trillion dollar industry that we're about to be a leader in. He just needs to show us that his team is capable. And you know, he's not going to tell us the truth, right? It's not about telling the truth. He loves to put an a date out there that's completely unrealistic. Yeah. No comment. The Mark Benoit Optimus demo was a bust. It really was. I'm not even sure that he was supposed to show that video. That was Optimus 2, 2.5, whatever. We better not see anything like that. If we see anything like that, let me state this very clearly. I think you could see a collapse in Tesla stock. Okay. So if Optimus is ultimately a bust, watch out below. Because if Optimus does not perform, I don't even know what the floor is. It's whatever car companies trade at, right? Maybe a little premium for their FSD. A little premium for a robo-taxi if and when that eventually materializes. But certainly you can't make a case for in the trillions of dollars.